What takes over, what makes you forget all the little trivia, is then the, the way the light hits the material, the reflections, adds a dimension that you didn't have in the models and drawings. That's how it lives. It becomes a living thing. The only thing an architect can do is be optimistic about how it interacts with the surrounding buildings. It can be a passive player, it can be a stoic player, it can be a passionate player. My thing is, I don't like the Chandler. I don't, I mean, it's not great architecture, but it's here and people have a lot of feelings about it, it's part of the community, so you have to respect that, whether you like it or not. I mean, I think that's like being a good neighbor. And so I tried to make a building that would preserve the iconic importance of the Chandler. To defer to that, I decided to break down the scale of the Disney Hall into smaller pieces, so it's not the same language. It relates to the Chandler. Yeah. Now the shapes of the exterior of Disney Hall are based on sailing. When you're wing on wing, the wind behind you, it forms a beautiful space. And if you look at the front of Disney Hall, it's wing on wing. It's the two sails. And you're at the helm. And this is the foyer. And here, when you look up, you'll be able to see the levels. No matter how great the design is, if it doesn't sound great, it's going to be a failure. Frank was very clear about this from the beginning. He said, this is a hall for the orchestra, and this is a, a building for music and that has to be the first priority. And everything else uh, is of lesser importance. And, and I thought this was quite a statement from, from an architect. It's very unusual that an artist such as Frank puts the ego bit to a sort of lower level of importance than the, the actual function of the building. <laughs> Do you ever get depressed when it's finished? Like the... postpartum blues? A little bit. Yeah, I do. You know that better than I do. You can't let go. When I let go is a year later after it's test of time, didn't leak, people like it, then I sort of let myself out a bit and enjoy it. Do you ever wonder what part of you did that? Yes. Where did that come oh, from? Oh, yeah, I, all the time. I say, well, how, where did that come from? Yeah, I do. It's like a magic trick. I call it a magic trick. But, you know, when I was a kid taking that ceramics class at SC before I became an artist, Glenn Lukens, I, this, you put the glaze on and the stuff, you put it into the kiln, and it would come out looking so beautiful sometimes. And you'd say, I'd say to Glenn, God, that's beautiful. I didn't, how did that happen? And he said, just claim credit for it from now on because somehow you made it happen. 